Um, Janine spent the following months on transportation for three months. What is her average monthly transportation expense? Um, if you get that one, I'm going to throw a marker at you or something, because that one's pretty easy. Add them up and divide by three, right? Uh, number 12 is the next one. John's total income last year was 31000 Of that amount, he spent 7900 for food. What percent of John's total income did he spend on food? What are I going to do? Divide. divide. Small number divided by the big number, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, anytime that I'm basically dividing, I'm probably going to have the smaller number on the top, and then it's going to get a decimal, and then I turn it into a percent by moving it two places to the big. Right. Uh, 13 is the next one. Caesar. Caesar's total income last year was 35000 He expects to earn 4000 more this year and wants to budget 24% of that income for food. What yearly amount should Caesar budget for food? What monthly amount should he budget for food? So, um, first thing I got to do is what? Add 31000 plus 35000 plus 4000 Okay, so add up your new uh, raise, I guess you would say. And then for your 39,000, you're gonna take that times 0.24, and that's gonna get you your overall answer. And then what do I do to that answer? Divide by 12. So again, make sure you read the question and see if it's a yearly expense or a monthly expense, All right? Again, if anybody wants to see any of this on the board, yell out. 14, what yearly amount should Caesar budget for transportation? And if it, if it is 17% of his income, what monthly amount? Um, so basically, basically the same thing, right? Yep. We'd go back to Caesar's 39,000 and then just do it with 17 instead of 24. Okay, hopefully, again, those sections hopefully weren't too bad. 16, the Best Buys, and again, we'll get into the Best Buys a little bit more when we do our little project here coming up. Um, but Best Buys will be a big part of that. 16 is the first one in the Best Buys. Shampoo A costs $3.89 for a 12-ounce bottle. Shampoo B costs $7.29 for a 25-ounce bottle. Which shampoo costs less per ounce? So again, notice when it says per ounce, that's, that should always be on the bottom because my per is kind of like your division sign, right? So basically I'm just taking 389 divided by 12 and 729 divided by 25, and what do we get? Shampoo B by? 0 0.032. 0.032, and then make sure that you round to the nearest tenth of a cent. So what's that mean? Well that's, cents obviously would be two decimal places, a tenth of that would be one more spot. Okay, so those get a little confusing, but again, um, notice that obviously the bigger one is less exp less expensive. So again, um, probably not going to ruin shampoo by keeping it for a while, right? Some of us take a little longer to uh, go through a <laughs> bottle of shampoo. Than you probably got to use like a dye. Yes, I use shampoo. Oh, why do you mean to? Excuse me. When I when I first shave it, you know, I gotta use shampoo to get all those little things out. Yeah, get all those Yeah. When I get haircuts. Also, you only. No, I do it all the time. You shave your every day. Does it hurt when you shave your head? No. Bro, why do you ever shave your head? I've done the razor. Really? Yeah. Isn't there Not a way to make yeah. yourself look like full hole? What's that? Isn't there a way to like a straight blood razor? A straight thing? A straight yeah, I've done the razor. Have you ever cut your head shaving? Yeah. Uh, that would be great. Sure. <laughs> well, I, 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 I wasn't I, laughing. I did it one time with one of those, you know, cheap like big ones or whatever. Yeah. It wasn't a big one. It was like this oh, generic brand. So I was going through it and evidently it broke. And it gouged my head, and I looked up, and blood was just all over. So, you know, you know, you know other ball guys do? They make a blood pack. So, they, whenever they cut their heads, they just put their heads together and put a blood pack. What? what? Where is this? This isn't the outlaw of Josie Wills. I don't think, uh, well, I don't shave my head with anybody else, so. <laughs> you can make a blood pack. So, if you could just wax it. All right, uh, number 20 is the next one. 
Number 20 is the cell phone one. So go back and flip back to page 354 because you got to use that little chart on page 354. So again, remember the cell phone one's kind of weird just because, you know, you're not probably going to do a whole lot with that. But at the same time, we just kind of want you to go through that. Okay? So look on the chart and I'll read it to you. Um, Mia has a cell phone from Telco. Okay, so get to Telco. In the month of March, she used 500 peak minutes and 2,000 off peak minutes. If taxes were 12% of the total airtime charges, what was her total cell phone bill for March? Now, I think some of us uh, had a problem with this one on the quiz, so make sure that you understand this. Okay. What was her total cell phone bill for March? What do you think? $62.49. No. Wait, I don't get to no. subtract the peak minutes. Okay, so let's go back. She has 500 peak minutes, but she only got 450. Yeah. So she's 50 over, right? Yeah. So how much does she owe for those? $22.45. 45 cents per, so 45 cents times 50. Oh, okay. And then um, I would guess you don't have to uh, tally in the activation fee, right? And then her other minutes she was under, right? So we don't have to do anything for that. So it looks like $39.99 plus whatever you got for your other calculation. It's $69.99. There you go. Then times your 12%. Okay, don't forget your taxes. Wait, so is it 22.5 plus 39.99? Yeah. I got 62.4. And what, then you got to do your taxes. Tax. Oh, shoot. So then take your 12%. That makes more sense. Yeah, everybody got it? Yeah. Okay. So again, uh, you know, that's one of those things that you guys don't really think about or worry about or, you know, you guys probably weren't even, were you even into the gigs right at the yeah. beginning? Did you have to watch your gigs for a while? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you still watch gigs or is everybody on? Oh, I just, he's a okay. I still uh, are on gigs. I, I'm not on unlimited yet. Because I got rollover ones or whatever, so I, with me at home, I, I never really use it when I'm not on Wi-Fi, so. Um, 22 is the next one. Um, kind of the same thing, but, um, you know, a lot of you guys have been gone to, you know, some kind of Netflix or, what'd you say, Hulu the other day or something like that, right? So a lot of you guys don't even do this either, but a satellite television provider charges $19.99 per month for service. If you commit to a two-year contract, it will waive the $39.99 setup fee and charge $15.99 per month. How much will you save by committing to a two-year contract? So basically, um, I would take $19.99 times 24 and add it to $39.99. And then compare that to fifteen ninety nine times twenty four, and then subtract those two. Yeah. One hundred thirty five dollars and ninety nine cents. One hundred thirty five dollars and ninety nine cents. Everybody good to go? Yeah. Isn't the thirty nine ninety nine on the fifteen ninety nine? No, on the nineteen. The thirty nine ninety nine is on the nineteen ninety nine. Oh. Because if you if you're guaranteeing that you're gonna go with the two year, they drop the thirty nine ninety nine okay. and lower your thing. So they're trying to get you to the two year deal, but their cancellation fees probably Got it. astronomical. That's where they're gonna get you. Uh, Twenty three is the next one. Adjusting a budget. Okay. So the Rutledge family finds that they are over budget a hundred dollars in food. They increased their $750 food budget by $100 and decreased their $300 entertainment budget by $100. If their monthly income is $5,000 per month, what percent of income is budgeted for food and then for entertainment? 
So realistically, what are we using for the food? Eight hundred and fifty dollars. So I'd take eight fifty divided by five thousand, and then for the entertainment, we would actually use what? Two hundred. Two hundred, right? Because we're subtracting it from that entertainment. Seventeen percent and four. Everybody good? Seventeen and what? Four. Four percent exactly. Right. So again, just make sure you read slow and know if it's increasing or decreasing. Uh, 26, now we go to the CPI ones. So flip back to your little chart on page 366, the big green chart. Okay, so the first one says the CPI index number in 1996 for housing was 154. Oh, I guess you didn't even have to go back there, did you? In 97, the index number for housing was 157. What was the rate of inflation? So. What do you got to do with rate of inflation? Yeah, subtract them and subtract them and divide by the little one. Subtract them and divide by the smaller one. Or if you had to use the chart, yeah. go the year before. Go the year before that they asked about. So in 1997, you would have went to it, use that number, and then the one before that. Okay, and then you're always dividing by. So in this case, the 1996 number, right? Yeah. Everybody get with that one. Twenty-seven. Now we go to the purchasing power. Some of us had some problems with this one. Uh, the CPI index for 2000 was 172.2. What was the purchasing power of the dollar in 2000 compared to the base period of 1982 through 1984? So basically all I gotta do in this is what? Um, you should be able to just divide, 100 divided by the 172.2. That's where I think some of the confusion was about. In, the, in 26, when they ask you for rate of inflation, you do have to subtract them. In 27, you should be able to just take 100 divided by whatever your number is from your category. So if you take 100 divided by 172.2, that should be your answer. And so you get what? 0.581 you should have. Make sense? You said the bigger by the smaller is this one? 172 mm -hmm. divided by 100 or something? In 27? Yeah. You're taking 100 divided by the number that's in from the chart. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then 28 was about the unemployment stuff. If the unemployment rate for all workers shown in the unemployment rate doubled because of economic slowdown, what would the new unemployment rate be at the new rate? Okay, so let's do that one first. So for all, it was 4.9, so I just take 4.9 times two. Make sense? And then the second one says, how many workers would be unemployed out of every one million workers? So what do you have to do? So 0 0.098 times a million. Get you. So out of a million people, we'd have almost a hundred thousand people not working. Kind of scary, right? Yeah. Okay. Any questions there? No, sir. I think that's all. Do we stop it? Yes, please.